Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins Infrastructure Meeting. Uh, we are one week before the Jenkins Contributor Summit. To the agenda today, we have a few interesting things. So the first thing that I want to, to mention is Damien is working on upgrading to AKS cluster from version 1.18 to 1.19. We, we hesitated to do the, the upgrade to the version 1.20. But because of the contributor summit happening next week at the Silicon, we decided to be more, um, I mean, to be safer, to have a safer approach. So we will just do one major upgrade at a time. So we don't, yeah, we don't introduce too much risk. So as far as I understand, the two major changes are around the Docker daemon, which is deprecated. Yes, no, totally. It just con removed totally. Container uh, that's Docker shim that has been uh, removed, and uh, container D is specific to AKS. Container D is used as Docker um, engine instead of Docker as container engine. Thank you. Thank you. And there are also some changes related to the Azure storage that are that make that upgrade almost mandatory for us since we have a heavy usage of that. That is the second change that needs to be checked before the upgrade. But awesome. everything sounds good. So that, that's awesome because we don't have major releases coming. So that's that seems to be the right moment to do it to do this. Um, that being said, we also uh, any questions regarding the AKS upgrades. So I, I saw that Damien, you prepare um just the announcement and status page. So once we merge this, um, we are fully ready to work on that. I still, I'm, I'm still not sure about my time to commit to that work yet. So I would prefer to wait very, until the very last moment before um, approving the maintenance. Is it okay for you? Not sure. Not sure to get. When, when do you? Explain? What I, what, what, I, what I mean is once we. Ah oh, yes, so you so okay, so once we once we, we once we merge this part, uh, uh, Windows the maintenance windows will be announced on status Jenkins.io. And my point was, if we are ready to, to do the upgrade on Thursday, that's fine. We can merge the upgrades. Otherwise, we can wait. Uh, let's say tomorrow to see if we want to do it on Friday. What's our what's your expectation? Oh, for me, uh, opening the status page uh, means that uh, we are ready for that. Okay, if, the, if there is a blocker that will be specific to one service, so for me, uh, I will I'm available and everything should be planned as accordingly, except maybe an outage on one of the specific pods. That's the only risk there. Okay, you know what? I'm going to validate that now. At your review Thanks. and uh, just one information, I forgot to make an announcement on this course since it's quite new. So we'll take care of doing that after the meeting. Okay. Uh, to to be sure everything is linked. Um, yes, that sounds good. That sounds good. Now, and Damien, that's scheduled for Thursday, eight a.m. UTC. Uh, if you if you're going solo, is there are there things in that session which are sensitive? Um, or is that something where, for instance, Aditya could join and be be watching over your shoulder and talking with you while you did it? Um, sure. If, it, if the time window is okay, I will be happy to do that. Even uh, either it's required or not, that's a good thing to be always too for that kind of things, uh, either for learning session, sharing ideas, or at least to be sure that uh, someone else uh, have a second pair on high on, on the action. So yes, with pleasure. Yeah, see, and I don't know what if Aditya is actually available, but 8 a.m. UTC is not that late in India Standard Time. So if I remember correctly, anyway, it's it's not an unreasonable hour of the day. Yeah, Aditya, feel free to make comments um, if it's okay for you. And if you if you want us to start later, that's fine as well. Um, yep. you, usually it's, I mean, it's, pretty straightforward because we just have to go to the Azure interface, select the right version that we want to use, and that's it. Um, the reason why they take uh, some time is because when you upgrade, it upgrade one node at a time. So it flag a node as um, 
in maintenance mode. And so it will remove one node at a time, deploy a new node, remove to the pods to, to, the, to, the, to the new node and so on. And that process can take some time because we want to be sure that uh, we don't break anything in the process. So uh, at least it's an option. Great, thank you. So that, that would, you would not consider that harmful and there's nothing so sensitive in the session that we couldn't do that. Yes. Exactly. Don't hesitate to contact me, Aditya, and I will add the link of the call record one uh, in IRC and in the HackMD associated note for the IKS upgrade. So if you're interested in joining and, and are available, uh, don't hesitate. And also if the time does not meet your schedule and you want to do it one or two hours later, there's no problem on that. Don't hesitate to mention on the IRC channel. Um, any other question or okay. discussion on IKS upgrade? So then it sounds like we can move forward. Um, so first regarding the LFX security topic. So several weeks ago, um, David came into this um, meeting to present what we could have. And so the next step was to install a GitHub app in the Jenkins C4 organization. So I decided to, to install that GitHub app, but only allow access to five kit repositories. So the purpose here is to identify how we can use that tool to, to detect security issues. And so I enabled it for RC bot, plug site API, plug site Jenkins version and Docker Jenkins LTS. So the goal is to analyze Golang, Java and React um, codes and also Docker images because we have, yeah, that, that's what we wanted to identify. I still don't have access so I had to request access to, to the service. So you have to go to security.lfx.linuxfoundation.org and then you have to open a support ticket um, to, to have access to specific dashboards. But yeah, in my case, I don't have access. I have access to the Jenkins CI, but not yet the Jenkins infra. So I have to double check that. If people are interested to participate, let's say Damien or um, Mark, um, yeah, I think you can also request access and I would be really happy to support that access. There is nothing um, more on this topic. I really doubt that I will have the time to work on this uh, until the next one, until the Jenkins contributor summit next week. Any question? Thanks for enabling it. Next topic is status.jenkins.io. So um, that, that was a small project and that's really nothing really urgent. But I made several changes to the status page. So the first one was to remove all the iframes. So that means that now the website loads um, a lot faster than it was before. And so for instance, in this case, you see the announcements um, that we generated 10 seconds ago. To, to, to announce the, the AKS upgrade. Um, so we have access to the different uh, services. More importantly, what I added was, I just did some, uh, I just finished some work that I started several months ago. So the first one is now the service link. You have access, so yeah, you don't see it on my screen, but you have you have three button. And so you can let's say select get the Jenkins.io. And in the case of get the Jenkins.io, you have a short description of what get the Jenkins.io is. And there you have the monitoring um, iframe, so the response time. So the idea is to have this page, to have those pages for um, every services. So if some people are interested to help with this project, that's really easy to do. You just have to go to status to get Jenkins infra slash status. So that's the, the, the status page. Um, and then from here, there are two main directories, the layout content, the template, so HTML templates. And if you go to content services, you have, you see three, three files. And so you can have, you can add more, let's say for www.jenkins.io. But the more important thing is 
you just have to reuse those parameters. So for instance, you can provide a service URL, you can specify um, a service description, you can specify monitoring iframes with a title and an iframe, you can provide some links. And so what I would like to do is to do that for every kit, uh, for every services that we manage. And usually, and what I'm envisioning is inside the links, I would provide info, links to, let's say the code or the way we deploy the service, all the kind of Git repository that could be useful to debug a specific issue on a, on a specific Git repository. The last element that I changed on status page was, you can go to monitoring. And also this, this is also something that I would like to improve. Um, do you have a section monitoring? Sorry, um, I, I, I've been a bit quick. So you have a section monitoring here. If you click on it, you have a simple page, you also have some link. And so this time, if you click on the link, let's say service HTTP response time, you have a Datadog dashboard for every services. So you can have a clear idea of uh, uh, how the different services behave. If you think that we should add more Datadog dashboards, um, yeah, feel free to open a Jira ticket to, to with your request and why you think that we should provide that information. And I would be really glad to bring that information. The two, the two additional dashboard, which are useful, um, you have one that I don't, that tells you if latest packages are available. So this one is just tell us that the latest LTS and the, the LTS, latest weekly release is available. So typically when uh, we do a new release and let's say we don't publish the Windows package, um, you, you usually see it here. And the other is on call notification. So it just provides us the worst SLO for specific services over the five, seven days. And otherwise you also see the notification when there is an outage on a specific event. So yeah, that, those were the changes that I, that I brought to, to the status page. Any question? Looks great, thank you. So next topic in the agenda is AKS upgrade, but I think we already covered that topic. Um, so regarding the SCI configuration on ci.jenkins.io, um, Damien, do you want to bring us a quick update on this yes. one? So ACI issues has been fixed. Uh, there have been uh, a few bugs corrected uh, by team. So thanks team for the help because it was uh, absolutely not my comfort zone. So that helped that helped me to be sure there were, were no um, error with the latest Azure plugins. So we were able to upgrade all the plugins that fixed all the issues that were caused by the initial bug and then the rollback. So we took the opportunity to also upgrade the latest EC2 plugin for the agents. And then since CI was down, uh, was uh, suffering from issues uh, during that part, we tried to reboot the virtual machine. Someone forget to put the S to defaults on the FS tab. That was uh, quite a funny issue to detect. So the virtual machine was not able to reboot. <laughs> So that problem has been fixed. Uh, now it's back in control with Puppet. So that kind of issue should not happen anymore thanks to the Puppet agent back uh, and working again. We upgraded the certificate. So while we were at the task, we upgraded everything on the machine. Jenkins core to the latest LTS that was released just before. All plugins, all packages, all over content of the operating system. So now that should be good. And finally, we took the opportunity to upgrade all the agent virtual machines, EC2 and Azure, to the latest version that has been built with Packer during the past months. So the operating system are up to date. That allowed us to quickly deliver Maven 3.8.1 as uh, requested by uh, other contributor. So that was quite a nice cleanup on CI Jenkins IO, hoping it will improve the life uh, of developers and our ability to iterate and update in a faster way in the upcoming months. That's Thanks. all for CA. Thanks, Damien, for that. that, that uh, I can quickly say trusted. Trusted works exactly the same. We did almost the same once we were sure that CI Jenkins worked after two days. Um, so everything has been applied in the same way prepared certificate, upgrade, plugin, etc. And Azure virtual machines, agents configuration. So everything should be okay. And all the in, uh, 
Dampora resources has been deleted to gain some money on Azure. So we can get back to businesses on these services. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Mark, any question here? No. Anita? That, oh, sure. Great result. So yeah. thanks for doing the fixes. Awesome. We brought two additional fixes to the trusted CI. Um, I think that was yesterday. So the first one was we discovered that the update center certificate expired. Um, it was supposed to expire three months after we, we created it um, in April, I think, something like that. So the reason why we, we took a very short um, life certificate at that, at that moment was because we, uh, we identified potential issues with the new root certificates. And so we wanted to be sure that it wouldn't have any effects uh, on the process. It did not. And so this time we generate a one year certificate. So we have more time in front of us. And we also be, also have a, had an issue with the certificate with a crawler job on trusted CI because we changed the name of the root certificate. So that was an easy fix, but yeah, really stupid. Um, the last topic that I want to bring here is I got, I got a notification from Fastly that uh, my credit card is expiring and that I have to change um, the credit cards. I haven't been charged in the past on my credit card because everything is covered by uh, sponsoring. But yeah, I have to identify a way to not have to put a credit card in the service. So I'm not sure yet if Fastly offered that option um, to open source projects or if I have to look uh, around the Linux Foundation. But yeah, if you have any suggestions, that's, that's something that I would like to solve pretty soon. Usually that's pretty difficult when you have um, infrastructure uh, open infrastructure the way we do because we have a lot of uh, sponsors we have a lot of different accounts and most of the time by default they, they assume that you will put a credit card but because you have individual contributors behind those um, um, I mean because you have individual contributor uh, we don't always have a credit card that we want to put uh, on the service so yeah that's a pretty common issue um, if you don't have so uh, any question or any last topic that you want to bring to the meeting here? Yes, just a question. It has been, so we discussed this in private. So I want to bring that to the team. Um, we should, we should uh, create a Google agenda, a bit like the SIG ones uh, for the Enfra team that Public or not public, I'm still not sure, but the goal of that agenda will be to mention the certificate renewal or when there is a depreciation of a component or whatever task that are time bound, like for instance, the update center certificate renewal yesterday. Uh, there are a lot of these tasks that are could be automated but are not because we need help or maybe it's not possible. So the goal is to have that uh, calendar that could act with alerts for everyone to share that knowledge. So it's not on someone's private calendar. It's not on a document that doesn't trigger any reaction. We want something with events. So I propose that we start with a Google a shared agenda like we do for the community. That could, uh, we can subscribe to this as team member. And so then we can have this kind of alert one, two weeks uh, before something goes up. I, I, I mean, yeah, as Damien discussed, um, this is something, as Damien mentioned, it, this is something that we discussed, I think, earlier today or maybe yesterday. Um, that wasn't my plan since a very long time. And I think that the, um, the certificates expiring issues. Um, really highlight that we need an agenda because not everything can be monitored i mean easily and so a lot of things could be catched just by using an agenda i don't think that that agenda should be public um because we want to pro we want to put um i mean important information there such as yeah critical certificate which expired um and but yeah we should have a, at least enough people on the agenda so um, people, several people can catch um, specific dates, but yeah, I'm open to suggestions. It sounds like the Google ad agenda is the easiest way to, to proceed. Um, yeah, may maybe, maybe this course provide an agenda that we could use. I have this something that I have to investigate. Any other, other question 
or topic you want to bring here? So I do have one last topic. Um, because of the silicon and the contributor summits next week, I would like to consult next week infrastructure meeting. Um, any objection? No objection from me. I think it's a good plan. No objection either. Awesome. Um, then thank you for your time um, and see you on RC. Um, I might have two points since we are not out of time. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, I've added them uh, at the end of the note on the action points uh, after the team agenda. So the first one is uh, Trusted is running regularly a job named GitHub reports that I understand to be some uh, a task, a regular task that retrieves statistics and put them on infrastructure. Uh, I will propose to, uh, to I, I will propose and do this uh, under approval review if it's okay to migrate that job on infra CI because that job is um, creating a lot of locks on trusted CI and uh, combined with the update center sometimes the build queue is quite high when something goes wrong and that GitHub report is really really creating a lot of locks and issues. Um, and so given the sensitivity sensitivity of trusted and the fact that infra CI is uh, way more stable because we can interact with it uh, in Kubernetes in easy ways, my proposal is to move it. Um, I'm not sure if I missed something when I analyzing this project because I don't know. So any external um, uh, ideas or feedbacks or comments on that, I plan to write an email to the Jenkins infra to ask that question but I wanted to bring that subject uh, to your knowledge during the team um, meeting. My last interaction on that job, I think was with Daniel Beck. And I, I just remember that, well, I think it's worth a conversation with him just to see, mm -hmm. because if I remember, isn't that the one that runs for a very long time, gets multiple copies of it running. Uh, we hope it ex completes some fraction of the times, has all sorts of interesting behaviors in that job. Uh, yeah, this is something that we have to investigate with Daniel and also regarding the, the, the permission. Uh, this is something that we have to investigate. Okay, I'm going to ask directly Daniel. Maybe the answer is no, it can move to release or, or not move. Um, the, the root problem, the problem I want to solve, in fact, is uh, I will want to avoid having so much uh, builds in the build queue. Uh, I saw there were already some usage of the lock. Um, uh, of the lock uh, pipeline keyword. Uh, but, but yeah, in that case, maybe uh, forcing it to only run one build at a time. Yeah, uh, because, and I think I think yep. there the a conversation with Daniel is really good because I, okay. I don't, I apologize, but I don't recall why it's structured the way it is. It's just a, a surprising structure, right? The fact that it's, okay. It seems like it's wasteful what it's doing, and I I I remember seeing them thinking it was wasteful, but not having come to a conclusion what to do about it. So thanks for detecting it and thinking about it more. Well noted. And I think I think I think for that one we you should create a Jira ticket because I'm not expecting you to work on it um, until mm -hmm. next week and. Um, Yep. I think that would be better to create a Jira ticket. So we move mm -hmm. the discussion there and have a tra trace of that. Yeah, the goal is to raise the discussion here. No action point uh, until July on my side on that topic. My, my, my only fear is that it can take several weeks before you implement that thing, that change, because of the discussion happening and because of mm -hmm. all the other priorities. Regarding the next one, starting using Cube Agent AKS for CI Agent with IO. Um, yeah, sooner is better. Uh, yeah, we still uh, need ways to, to reduce uh, Azure costs. Um, I mean, um, last month we were at 10K, a little bit, uh, slightly over 10K. So we definitely have to go below 10K. And so, and SCI represents a major part of the cost of the Azure accounts. So we, we still need one or two weeks to see the effect of uh, fixing the ACI configuration update on CI Jenkins IO. However, the proposal here is to not remove ACI, but to start adding a limited capacity of uh, pods, of Kubernetes pods that run on the dedicated AKS cluster. 
So, so it's monotonant. It's not expected to be multitonant. Only CI is expected to run on that cluster. And that cluster have a static capability in terms of resources. So the goal is to add that static capabilities and see the impact on ACI cost. As always, the, the best solution will be a mix of both. But since ACI are, are quite expensive, they are really good, really performance. That's really nice service, but it's expensive. So I think mixes two container like we do for the virtual machines with Azure VM and EC2, I think the solution will be with that. But the goal is to start checking that without breaking the usages. While, while we talk about Amazon, uh, the current process for the Amazon sponsoring is that we have to provide some cost estimation um, oh, yeah. to continue the process. Right. Um, that's in my to-do list. OK, yeah, I need I'm, to extract just, metrics yeah. uh, for you uh, on that topic then. So yeah, that's that's one thing. And yeah, another thing that I would like to warn is I'll have limited availability to work on infrastructure over the next week. Uh, so yeah, please pay attention to what you change. Break everything. Yeah, thank you. Um, we are now running out of time. So thanks for your time and see you on, on Libera. Thank you. Yeah.